I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. I'm, 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 I'm reasonable. I'm, I'm unreasonable. You, you have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm reasonable. Is she though? Is she reasonable? Um, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to the second episode of I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm Zaynab Johnson. Hey, you guys, how are you doing? Y'all like my intro song? I really, really like it. I actually love that song. On the first episode, you guys didn't get a chance to hear um, the entire thing, but that is the entire thing. So that is what you will be hearing. Um, on each episode. Okay, so before we get into the reasons, the reasons that I'm here, <laughs> before we get into the earth, wind, and fires, reasons, the reasons that we're here. let me just make some announcements. Um, I am coming to a city near you, possibly. Um, this weekend I will be in Tempe, Arizona at the Tempe Improv. That is this Thursday, February 29th through Saturday, March 2nd at Tempe Improv. Then the following weekend I will be in Tacoma, Washington. I will be in Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington at Super Funny Comedy Club. That is Friday, uh, March 8th through Sunday, March 10th. And then I'll be in Vegas. I'll be in Vegas on March 22nd and March 23rd at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club. It's called Kimmel's Comedy Club. Um, all the tickets are, the links are in the details of this podcast. So you can just click there or you can go to my website, which is also linked in the details of this podcast. So um, if I'm in a city near you or any surrounding cities, make sure you guys come see me, okay? Make sure you guys come see me. And while we are you know, doing housework. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it, but go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you, one, know when I'm posting some new stand-up, um, so that you know when I'm posting everything because anything that I do via <laughs> the YouTubes will be on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I'm Reasonable will be coming out every single Wednesday. <laughs> every single Wednesday. And so make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Um, and is there anything else? Oh, thank you everybody that came to my shows in Dallas this past weekend. I was at the Dallas Comedy Club um, this past weekend and I did four shows. I did two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. We sold three of them out and the fourth one was close to being sold out. Next time we're going to sell all four of them out. We're going to sell them out so hard we're going to have to add shows, right? Yeah. So thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming. Okay. All right. Now it's it's time for what's up with me what's up with z now y'all know this is the part of the show where i'm just going to tell y'all a little bit about my life and ask you guys i'm going to come to you humbly and ask your opinion if the choice that i made in the the situation that i am talking about if i'm being reasonable or not um and so in the comments when you let me know when you weigh in on it like oh z you're being you were reasonable or you were unreasonable. I want you guys to hashtag get. I want you guys to hashtag. <laughs> you know how sometimes your body just gives up on you? Like my mouth just decided in that moment, I'm not going to say words. I know she's trying to say words, but I'm done. My mouth quit and didn't even give me the two weeks. No, my mouth, you know how you could quit a job eloquently? Like you could give your two weeks. You know, you could write a formal letter and be like, you know, due to this reason, I will no longer be able to offer my services to this 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 position anymore. Um, and you fulfill your last two weeks, you know, honorably. Or you can storm in, some crazy could happen, and you like, you know what? I don't give up about this job. I don't give a shit about this job. I'm out of here, right? And it's like it's a spectacle, but you left with a bang, right? Or you could just not show up. 
You could be like, yeah, I'm not doing that job no more. And I'm not going to tell them. I don't care. I won't be there. They'll find out when they see, when they don't see me. That's when they'll find out when they, when they looking for the file, (laughs) when they, when they, when they, when they looking for me, they'll, they'll, they'll realize, oh, she's not here. That's what my mouth just did. My mouth was like deuces. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> what, what, what was I saying? I have no idea what I was saying. Um, I was saying that we're going to sell it out so hard next time we're going to have to add shows. Okay. That's the goal for me to be selling out so hard that we got to add shows. So many of y'all want to see me in every single city that we got to add shows. So that's what we're working towards. Okay. Remember I said it, this is the second episode of this show. Remember I said it. Okay. Um, okay. So one this week I, um, oh, I, so there's a lot, there's a lot happening actually this week. I, last night I was on after midnight on CBS hosted by Taylor Tomlinson. Um, it was me, Brendan Hunt, Mark Marin, Um, and we had a good time. So if you did not see me on after midnight, you can still watch it. Feel free to go to your CBS app or Hulu or wherever you watch TV and the internet, like, Go find me. I was on a show. It was a good time. Um, I was featured in Rolling Stone in a new issue of Rolling Stone with a a few other wonderful comedians, um, humorous talent, I'll say. Um, So pick up your copy of Rolling Stone. If you never purchased a Rolling Stone magazine before, Now's the time to at least go to the newsstand and check it out or go online. I'm actually going to like put a link to my p- specific article in the details of this podcast. But you could also go buy yourself a hard copy. Um, if you buy yourself a hard copy and mail it to me, I'll sign your hard copy if you want that. If you want that. I just thought about that on the spot. If you want that, I'll do it. Um And I believe that, so I did this wonderful show called In Love and Struggle um, at the Media Theater in New York City with a a bunch of amazing um, women artists. Uh, It was narrated by Cree Summers. I think she's best known for her role as Freddie on A Different World. But I mean, everybody knows she's like a giant in the voiceover world, but just a wonderful sister, Amanda Seal, just a, just a, a wonderful people. Um, and so we did this show and it was recorded for Audible. It's called In Love and Struggle. And this year's topic was a reimagining of the future or an altiverse imagined, an, alt, an, alt, an altiverse, the future imagined by black women. Um, and so I believe that that is coming out this week. Um, and so if it is, that link will be in the details of this podcast as well. All right. So my show's in Dallas this weekend. One of the shows, every single show, and I say this humbly, I say this gratefully, I say this with no ego at all, but I don't think I've done a show on the road where someone, guy or girl, hasn't come out and been like, I want to date you. I like you. I think you're funny. And I want to date you. And yeah, I'm here to enjoy the show. But I'm really here to like get to know you. (laughs) Which can be kind of awkward in the room. I'll be very honest. Um, Depending on how they approach it, right? But in one of my Dallas shows, it was four people. I could not get through the show. It was four people. I mean, and diverse. Okay. We had a little 23 year old. He just kept asking me to follow him on Instagram. Like he, I know y'all like, well, maybe he didn't like you. Maybe he was just trying to get a follow. No, he liked me, but because he's 23, he also, the begin all and end all of life for him is a follow on Instagram. Then I had a girl, a girl and a guy. They came together. They weren't in a relationship. They were platonic, but they both came together like, I don't know which one of us is going to bag her, but we both going to try. We b- <laughs> so it's a girl and a guy, and I think that they were more closer to my age because they said that they was in the, the guy at least said that he was in his 30s. Um, and the last guy, I was calling him 41. We was calling him 41, and I, low key, low key, 41, if 41 could have probably got a little bit more conversation out of me. 
if the circumstances were right, 41 might have been able to get a little bit of conversation out of me. Uh, but we but we had a fun time with it. You know, um, all of my Muslim brothers and sisters that was in the crowd was like, ask them if, if they'll convert. We, we Ask them if they're, you know, all the women in the crowd was like, ask them what they do for a living, how much money they make. All the Muslims were like, no, ask him or they ain't even say her. They not playing like that. They said, ask him if he's willing to convert and I went all around the room and 41 was like you know what I'll convert now whether he was telling the truth or just saying what he needed to say in the moment he had us on his side anyway I only say all of that to say that while people do come to my show and seriously have a romantic interest in me I am never interested in dating a fan and it's not even you you can be attractive you can be smart you can be accomplished you can be all of those things and the mere fact that you are a fan kind of I don't know I know so even me saying it I'm like dang they could be perfect they could they could have a great personality be fine be successful all of that and just because they at your show liking what you do supporting what you do you ain't gonna date them already I'm like that sounds very unreasonable Zainab watch what you say but the thing about it is when I'm on a road like a lot of times I'm by myself, so that doesn't make me comfortable like exploring a city or going somewhere with a stranger, somebody who's very familiar with the city, with people in that city. But then I'm the one that's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I'm the fish out of water. Like just as a woman, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't ever feel that safe to me. You know, um, I think it's very hard for you to like talk to me. Like I remember I was doing a show in Nashville. Right. And this guy interrupted my show and let me know and the rest of the audience very seriously like no I like you and you gonna be my wife like dang you ain't even gonna ask me out for I'm gonna just be your wife that's a jump right but <laughs> but he said it and he told me what he does for a living he was t and, I, and I had to say to him I was like even if I were interested in you I'm not moving to Nashville so that's also a thing that is like a knock against the person, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm coming to a city that I don't live in. This most times pretty far from where I do live. And so even if I did spark some romantic interest with you, you know how strong it would have to be for me to be interested in somebody to live 2,000 miles away from me at this point in my life? So, you know, also sometimes... People don't know that I'm going to be outside after the show. They don't know that I'm going to be at the door, like, thanking everybody for coming, taking pictures, all of that stuff for free. I do not charge. At this point, I do not charge. Because me talking to y'all and thanking y'all and taking pictures and hugging, is that that is me reciprocating the support. You get what I'm saying? Y'all showing up for me. I'm like, I got to I gotta look you in your face and say thank you. You get me? You ride? With, like, you, you know? But they don't know I'm going to do that after the show. I don't announce it. I don't offer like that stuff to be sold. You know what I'm saying? Before the show. So you don't know that that's going to happen. So sometimes people will interrupt my show in an attempt to get my attention. But that that's the quickest way to kind of turn me off because it's like, yeah, this is my show. Yeah, it's fun. But ultimately, I'm at work and I take my job very seriously, you know. And so if you feel like. Like, I would never just walk into, if he a lawyer, I would never just walk into a courtroom and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. I'm, I know, I know, I know y'all got a case going on right now, but I really like this man and I really need him to know. So could you just, no, don't object. Please don't object. I, I'm a woman in pursuit of love. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that it's a really fine line. It's a really... There, there's a nuance to beyond you having to show up and come C-O-R-R-E-C-T, correct? Why did I spell that? That is not a curse word. Beyond you having to show up really as a viable person to date me, which I believe is out there, you know, um, 
it really is like a nuanced conversation and how to get my attention at a show, hold my attention, have me take you serious and get me to trust that I can give you a little bit of my time while I'm in that city privately. Do you get what I'm saying? And so because it's so nuanced and so specific and touchy, it's easier for me to just be like, I do not date fans. And so I don't know what y'all think. Y'all think it's unreasonable for me to uh, completely disregard anybody that has romantic interest just because they've shown up to a show of mine? Let me know in the comments and definitely ha use the hashtag, um, oh, what's up with Z? Um, and let me know if I'm being unreasonable and, or reasonable. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Um, and tell me, like, give me a suggestion. Like, give the guy a suggestion or parameters that suggest me being safe with you um, trying to pick me up at one of my shows. <laughs> okay. This is me reading through my... Uh, this is me reading through my... I made a list of... Things that are unreasonable. I made a list of things. Quick. We're going to be doing this every week. Like topics this small. But okay. So the main, the main, the main topic on our agenda today is Wendy Williams documentary. Um, we'll get to that. So just so y'all know, Wendy Williams documentary. That's the main story. But um, I, yo, we got every week. I'm going to give y'all a list of unreasonable things. Okay. Unre I don't know. Maybe it'll be reason. But we're going to go through a quick list. Okay. First, Donald Trump. <laughs> Former president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, host of, I was about to say, who wants to be a millionaire? Him. Um, what was the name of the show? You Fired? People at Work? I never watched the show. I don't know. But anyway, Don, former president, uh, currently being indicted, former president Donald Trump said that, quote, the black community embraced him because he's indicted, to which a good amount of Black people had a problem with that. A good amount of the black community had a problem with that. And here's why. Right. So basically, Donald Trump is saying that. Him having a mugshot. Um, sort of um, makes the black community feel like he's an ally because we go through the same thing. And so we see that as like, oh, he's one of us. He's going through the same thing that we're going through. The, the the most un it, it is a, a wildly unreasonable statement, but I but I do it, it, okay okay okay. Let me back up. I think most things he says is unreasonable, but I think that a lot of people were like, "What? That's so crazy!" And it's because he spoke in generalities, right? And we hate that because when you speak in like generalities, it feels like, "Oh, it's all of us," right? And you over here just being black, and then they mention black community, and you doing the math, and you like, "Well, I'm black." And I believe I'm a part of the community. So now what happened? I like Donald Trump because he got a mugshot. Well, damn, I don't feel that way. So am, am I not black? Am I not a part of the community? Or is he just saying, is he just out his rabbit ass mind? But here's the thing. It is unreasonable to believe that something isn't true just because you disagree with it. So I'll say that again. It is unreasonable to believe that something is not true just because you disagree with it. And by that, I mean, there are a lot of people. There are, now, I don't know, a lot, I'm not gonna tell you a thousand people, I'm not gonna tell you a certain percentage of the black American population, but there are a good amount of people, a, a good amount of people contributing to the the public conversation that do feel like he is cool, like he is one of them because they feel like he has more similarities than they have with his opposing candidate. And as much as that sucks, 
It's true. Now, is it the entire black community? It's never the entire black community. It ain't never the entire black community. So it's already unreasonable to say the black community because it's it's just it's just too many people that ain't with what you're saying. It's more people than ain't with what you're saying. That's really the truth. But whenever we make generalities, it's just unreasonable. Um, do y'all like how I <laughs> just, cause I think, you know, when I be talking, sometimes I get real, you even see it when I'm on stage sometimes, even my friends in conversations, I just be loud and making a point, And then I trail off when I, when, when my mind realizes I'm tired of what I was talking about, it just decides to quit on me like the job. Um, yo, this video is so funny. This is a video of Big Daddy Kane on stage. Big Daddy Kane is a rapper from... The 80s, I believe. Ugh. Big Daddy Kane is one of the original rappers. Um, and he was performing at a show. Um, and they had um, a ASL, a translator, do, you know, doing signing on stage, signing all his lyrics on stage for the hear, hearing impaired people. I'm not sure what you should say, hearing impaired or deaf. For all the people in the crowd uh that have some that need some sort of you know hearing assistance and he did not know <laughs> he did not know that they were up like nobody told him i guess so he's pushing him off the stage i'm gonna go ahead and say this is wildly unreasonable because all you gotta do is look all you gotta do is look and see that he is signing he ain't next to you. He ain't facing you. He ain't trying to hurt you. He ain't doing nothing but facing the crowd and moving his hands. So anybody, now I know, I was about to say, I know Big Daddy Kane kind of old, but um, sign language been around. Sign language is older than Big Daddy Kane. Okay? So it was very unreasonable for, he, for him to push the man off. Even the man looked at him when he was, he was pushing him like, you know what's crazy too because there's, there's so many shows that I've done especially at colleges where they have someone signing you know my set and when they're signing your set they have to do everything that you say everything that you say and do and so even if you stop and address them they can't stop and talk to you back they got to sign every single thing that you're saying right and so while the while Big Daddy Kane is pushing the interpreter he's He's looking like, and I, I mean, I don't know because I, I can't read sign language really. Like, I can't read sign language. I know the alphabet, A, B, C, D. I know the alphabet. Uh, but he was looking like, and I just wonder if that, if, if he signed any, well, I guess Big Daddy Kane ain't say nothing different. So it was unreasonable. Read the room. <laughs> like, literally, read the room, Big Daddy. Yo, skin bleaching. Why, why is this a thing? Because it don't never look good. Unless you already have white skin, skin bleaching does not look good. It does not. Look at Sammy Sosa. I don't even know this, um, this reggae artist name, but look at him. Look at him. Look at these people. Look at them. It does not, it, cause you just end up looking gray. You end up looking like ash. You end up looking like Casper the ghost. It's not, I don't care how, I don't care if there's colorism all over the world. I don't care if every person ever been attracted to a light skinned person. You're not a light skinned person. Now you, you looking like something on the bottom of a chimney. The skin, the skin bleaching has to go. Maybe the solution is, you know how Clorox now had, like Clorox forever had bleach, right? And you only use it on your whites. And then in the past couple of years, Clorox came out with a special kind of bleach that you get to use on like your colored clothes, right? Your colors. <laughs> colored clothes sounds wild. Um, your colors, right? Your, your clothing that are multiple colors. Maybe they need that type of bleach for the skin. It's unreasonable. Okay, so last thing. Oh, no, not the last thing. Keeping it a hundred. That is that is one of the most unreasonable things. Whenever I hear a person say, you know, I'm gonna keep it a hundred, I'll be like, shut up, you lying in my head. <laughs> the moment, remember Ray J the, on on his reality show for the love of Ray J, he used to be like, I'm gonna keep it a hundred, I'm gonna keep it a hundred, I'm gonna keep it a <laughs> hundred. 
<laughs> and Ray J, the most lionist, he the most not telling the truth person that we love, you know? So when I hear a person say keeping it 100, I'll be like, shut up, they lying. You lying, shut up. Nicki Minaj tour. Nicki Minaj tour. So Nicki Minaj uh, announced her Pink Friday tour. It starts March 1st, I believe. So that's this coming weekend, I believe. And when it went up online, there was a disclaimer. Let me find this disclaimer. There was a disclaimer um, on the Live Nation site that read, Please be advised that in accordance with California state regulations, we are obligated to disclose the presence of a level three sex offender backstage. Mr. Kenneth Petty will be present. Attendees under the age of 18 must be accompanied by an adult aged 18 or older. Identification will be verified prior to entry through the metal detectors. Through the metal detectors, we kindly request that attendees refrain from engaging with the aforementioned individuals. Then it says individuals under the age of 18 will be mandated to wear a distinctive vest, a distinctive pink. I don't know if it was supposed to be pink because it's Pink Friday, a pink neon vest labeled child under 18 and will be directed to a designated pit area reserved exclusively for minors. Security personnel will be stationed in close proximity to ensure their safety and well-being throughout the event. On Twitter, people was dragging Nicki Minaj, Twitter on TikTok. I'm sure on Twitter too, but I, I ain't been on X in, in forever. But I'm on TikTok, they was dragging Nicki Minaj. Like, girl, let go. If this is what you got to do with your husband, let it go. Like, he ain't worth it, girl. If this is... Da, da, da. So I just want to go ahead and say... I, I'm going to... We're going to discuss it really quickly. But let me just go ahead and say it was, a, it was fake. It wasn't real. That was never on Live Nation site. Uh, news sources looked into it. That was... Something that people are saying, so so th people are saying that this stemmed from the beef between Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj. You know, Megan Thee Stallion came out with her new album and her um, first single was the song titled Hiss. And she says the lyrics, um, they don't like, they don't, they don't not like Megan. They they don't like Megan's law, something like that. These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. Megan's law is the law that, sex in most states where and it's definitely in California and that's where the show was supposed to be is it says that you know if you're a sex offender that you have to register if you're in close proximity of a school or of anywhere where children you have to reg you have to register as a sex offender when you move um and so this was fake um but it it, it did bring me to the question of like if that if it was real What's the big deal? Because, I mean, it is something that we know about her husband, and it is something that we know about her, but that's not two things. That's, that doesn't, of all the things to make me not like Nicki Minaj's music, her um, marrying someone who was convicted of a crime that none of us, like or agree with right like there's certain crimes you know like you could be like oh you robbing a bank oh you did it oh you did it and people can fall in different places but when it comes to like when it comes to rape people it's just there's there's no there's there's no ambiguity there's no sympathy there's no you know what I'm saying there's no coming back really and it to me it really goes into like our justice system, again, let, let me be very clear so don't nobody come at me talk about like, you trying to justify it? Absolutely not. If you know me at all, I, it, it, it's, it, I'm also the person. That's why I want to discuss it because I'm also the person that is it's unforgivable, you know? But the way our justice system is set up is if you do a crime and you're convicted for the crime, then you have to serve time. And after you serve time, which is supposed to be you paying your debt to society, right? And you may have to register places everywhere you go. People got to know that that's you. They going to know anyway because Nicki Minaj is a public figure, right? But if you do all of that, can you not, can you then not try to, like, I guess what I'm asking is, 
is it unreasonable to believe that there's any level of redemption for a person that commits a heinous crime? Or let me not say commits, I don't know what that man did, but is convicted of a heinous crime. Um, yeah, is it, is it, I, I, I think it's funny, whoever thought about that. I think that that's fine. Because it's like Nicki Minaj, you know, in her battle with, with uh, Megan Thee Stallion, she talked about Megan Thee Stallion's mother being dead. She said something about they, they, they had like um, uh, barbs go to the graves and stuff. It got a bit ridiculous, right? Um, it got unreasonable. Um, <laughs> so if, if we're talking about being fair, right, it's like... Michelle said when they go low, we go high, but that ain't fair. That's going high, you know? And so if we're being fair, they also went low and somebody created this little spoof thing that was like, oh, you trying to go see Nicki Minaj? Well, just so you know, if you're trying to go see this artist, they they got a full-blown person convicted of, uh, you know, I'm about to say stage three rape. That ain't right. Um, level three. I got to look up the levels. Y'all know the levels? Um, uh, but I just, I don't know. Is, uh, is redemption unreasonable? What y'all think? All right, let's get to the main story. Let's get to Wendy Williams and this documentary, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm not, I am in no way laughing at d this documentary at all but but let me just tell you what was very strange to me it's called um it's called where's wendy or something like that what's this documentary called let me look it up let me get the proper um title for it so yeah the documentary is called where is wendy williams which is so inaccurate because it's like what you mean where she is she right there on camera asking for alcohol saying she want to be famous, she want to do a show, she doing a podcast. It's she right there on camera. Do y'all do y'all did y'all ever listen to the podcast um where is Richard Simmons? Now they ain't know where Richard Simmons was. Simmons was. This is my my mouth is quitting again. They ain't know where Richard, Richard Simmons was. They was knocking on his door. They was trying to find him. They was trying to ride by his house. It was for years. They didn't know. They knew he wasn't. I be, they believed he wasn't dead. I listened to the podcast. I can't remember it now, but I was captivated listening. I was wondering too, like, yeah, where is Richard Simmons? Because he was being positive and doing exercise tapes, and ain't nobody seen him in years. But it's like. Why would they name it Where's Wendy Williams? It's like she is right there on camera. She probably shouldn't be. Maybe the documentary should have been called Here is Wendy Williams and we know we ain't shit for, for, for putting her out on TV like this. Or maybe it could have been called Missing Wendy Williams because like maybe we missing the old Wendy Williams and we getting to know this new Wendy Williams this clearly suffering from some things right or maybe it could have been called Wendy is it karma now that's that's petty <laughs> but that's what a lot of people saying uh it would still work better than where is Wendy Williams? It's like, y'all, she is right. She on camera when she don't want to be. Okay. She right there in our face for four episodes. Where is she? Where is she not? Cause she was in California when she wasn't supposed to be. How do I know the goddamn documentary? Or the title could be like, Wendy, how you, how you really doing? Remember how Wendy used to be like, how you doing? Maybe it could be like, <laughs> How you really doing? How you how you really doing? <laughs> I am foolish. Um, okay, so the documentary was released um, four episodes this past weekend, and online there's two major responses happening. The first response is, if you don't know who Wendy Williams is, because when I used to do my other podcast, people used to be like, Zainab, I love listening to you, but can you please like explain sometimes like who and what you're talking about before you go into the opinion? And I'm like, 
or you could just stop and Google. That's what I do when I'm listening to stuff and I don't know the references. I'll be like, let me pause. I'll be like, let me pause and look up. Let me get the information I need to understand what the person is saying, but whatever. If you don't know who Wendy Williams is, Wendy Williams was a is a radio personality um, whose brand was built off of um, <laughs> keeping it a hundred. No, <laughs> was built off of like gossip, you know, built off of kind of like the more negative side of people's of celebrity uh, gossip, you know, celebrity hot topics. It was more so um, showing the, th- the, 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 the things that maybe people did not want to celebrate. Even a, how you doing was her, you know, claiming that there was a rapper that was closeted. Um, and then she got her own talk show and that was a really big hit syndicated in so many different, in so many markets. Um, and now we're seeing, uh, you know, uh, the decline of the, the, the possible decline. It doesn't have to be the, in, the inevitable decline or the permanent decline, but definitely right now the decline of a very, very popular um, and steadfast media personality um, who really built her career in New York City, from New Jersey, but really built her career in New York City. Um, so... There was four episodes, um, and apparently the documentary started. I'm, I'm this. I, so me even mentioning this, I ain't really gonna talk about the documentary like that. Like, yeah, there's certain things that are clear. Like they discuss in the documentary that I, they dis, they don't really discuss it. Actually, everybody, it was quite unreasonable actually, because it's like clear these are symptoms of dementia. It's like clear she's it, clearly she's. She, it's clear she know where she at in a moment and in the next moment she don't got no idea where she at she know what she talking about in one second in the next second she don't know what she talking about so it's clear but then for people to sit on tv and be like no i don't think i don't see nothing is wrong i mean she, and every single scene she's talking about i need alcohol and then they're gonna cut to the girl saying i mean she, i think she knows her limit she knows when to stop so now y'all playing right So in Wendy Williams declining capacity, she um, in her declining capacity, she um, I want to make sure this camera doesn't cut off in her declining capacity. She this is what I didn't know. She is under a guardianship. And I know with um, Britney Spears, we were talking about a conservatorship and I had to look up like, what's the difference between guardianship and conservatorship? Usually conservatorship is really only about money, but guardianship is about money, but it could be everything. And typically it's for a child, but anybody can file for guardianship over people. Like I was reading articles, they were saying that landlords could submit a, a petition for guardianship over a tenant somebody they got no relation to, like no familial relation to, they can file a petition for guardianship to say that they are incapable of acting for themselves just to get them evicted. Yo, this is what I mean. That's why I'm even, so when we go back to the Nicki Minaj case, it's like, listen, the rape ain't cool. Rape, Rape is terrible. You know what I'm saying? Rape is terrible. But our justice system is so flawed. It's so severely flawed that because for someone to be like, you ain't of sound mind or body or able to handle your finances. And so judge, give me somebody who don't got no familial relation to them, not married to them, ain't even know them that long. I'm, Wendy Williams is under a guardianship, which is crazy because you know what I didn't know? Wells Fargo, her bank, filed a guardianship like nobody in her family, nobody on her TV show, nobody in her professional staff. Wells Fargo, because the son like supposedly spent like a hundred thousand dollars really quick. But and, listen, in a documentary, Wendy be saying everything she do, she do for 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 Kevin, her son, everything she do, all the money she's like, t- she want him to have it all. She want to make a whole bunch of money just so he could. He is very important. He's her son. He's her only son. 
And so he spent a bunch of money at one time and Wells Fargo went to the court and was like, nope, she's she's not of right mind or whatever. And she, that's that's the most unreasonable thing I ever heard in, in my life. And then maybe like episode four, the sister, Wendy Williams sister comes on and is like, listen, I was trying. I did everything I could do to try and be the guardian. But they wouldn't even let me, her sister, be the guardian. They assigned it to somebody else. So it's somebody else who don't know Wendy at all. Ain't been in Wendy's life, ain't there showing up, saying what she can do, what she can't do with her money. And ain't nobody, and, and she don't have access, and don't nobody in her family have access to use the money how they see fit for her. That's, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, that's the, that's the most unreasonable thing I think I ever heard in my life. But here's the thing, right? Because we ain't, we, here on I'm Reasonable with Zane F. Johnson, we ain't about just talking about the problem without a proposed solution. First thing I did was Google, what can you do about it? What can you do to prevent this? Obviously, don't none of us know that if, if, the, if dementia is waiting at, for us at some point in our journey, right? Because this, we don't all had that had, where you walking down the street and you think, or you driving your car and you think you going to work and then boom, a car acts, some, something happened to change the course of your whole day. That's how dementia be waiting for people like, Oh, she, <laughs> she thinks she about to um, retire from her show and do a award-winning podcast and have millions of listeners. She thinks she about to be the uh, club Shay Shay before there was a club Shay Shay. She think that that's about to happen. <laughs> well, my name is dementia. And, and, and when she gets to my street, <laughs> I'm going to hit her hard. Sorry for the, <laughs> for the bully dementia act out. Um, it also doesn't help when you have a condition like that. Um, it doesn't help if you have substance abuse. The worst thing for any ailment, the worst thing for dementia, cancer, anything, anything that's, tar that's attacking your body, that's attacking your mind, is to put po any. the worst thing is to poison it. The worst thing is to poison it. How, how can your body fight? Anywho, it's a bunch of people, family included, managers included, this damn publicist. We ain't going to get. Listen, if unreasonable was a person and a character, Wendy herself is unreasonable. She going to tell a girl um, you need liposuction. Wasn't nobody even talking about the way the girl looked. Just going to come out and say you need like, and she did not need liposuction. She might need to change her diet and she might need to go to a gym if she wants to, but she didn't need liposuction. And for you to just say that out of nowhere, <laughs> a lot of people feel like the um, Wendy Williams documentary is sad. A lot of people feel like sh um, she deserves it. A lot of people are like your whole career was built on the, downfall or the um, negativity in other people's lives and now look at all of the negativity in your life feel how you want to feel I, I actually I'm be very honest with you I don't think I think it's reasonable to feel both of those things I really do I when I watched it I I I do think that it's ironic you know like Dang, wow, you, 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 you know, you had a platform for years that exposed a lot of people's, um, you know, worst moments. And now your worst moment, you know, maybe not worst moment, but, you know, really bad moments for you now are on display for the world to see. But but I also felt like, damn, this is so sad because it's still just what and I have no I'm not like a Wendy fan. I'm not not a fan. She's just a person that I know that exists, you know, you know, um, but it's just when when we're watching somebody in declining health, it's just a hard thing to watch. It's a hard thing to watch. Um, but also. I am very much not a person that believes dementia absolves you of any of your sins. Okay? If you if you if you was robbing banks and now all of a sudden you got dementia and you can't remember the banks you was robbed, oh well, you still got to go to jail cuz we have the proof that you robbed the banks. 
So I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, this was a terrible person. They did all of these awful things. But now look at them in their diminished state. Let's just forget all of those terrible things that they did. Almost kind of like when a person dies. It's like that was clearly a terrible person. They was mean to everybody. But now that they in a coffin, everybody is like, they were so wonderful. And let's just forget how terrible they was because now they laying in a coffin. No, that is a really bad person who happens to be dead now. And now they got to, depending on what you believe, they have to, it's their judgment day. Um, boom, 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 boom. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but what I do want you guys to weigh in on is our guardianships reason. I feel like it is the most unreasonable thing to do, especially if there's no real rhyme or reason in our judicial system, in our court systems that say whether a person is really able to take care of themselves, fend for themselves, and then who, who should be appointed to do that? So as I said, we're not a show about just problems. We are a show about solutions. Um, and so the solution is you have to have a living will. You have to have instructions. You have to have instructions filed, filed with the state, with the clerk that you live with the, of the, the, the city, state, county that you live in that says, if for some reason I am of diminished capacity, if for some reason this happens, if I pass away, if I'm, you know, in a vegetative, a, a vegetative state, if, 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 and I know a lot of people don't like to do it because they like, I'm not speaking that over my life. If it's smarter, it's smarter to say if than to just ignore the win. It's smarter to say if this happens than ignore when it do happen. Now you ain't got nothing in place. And now we got a lady, the one person that's responsible besides Wendy for all of this, the guardianship person, the, the guardian, the, the guard, 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 the guardian. <laughs> The Guardian ain't never know we're on camera. We don't know who she is. I know they recently printed her names because we have some good journalists out there that was like, no, 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 no. You ain't about to remain anonymous. But it's like she the only one on camera that don't got an answer for nothing. We just looking at the publicist looking dumb and unqualified. Tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think guardianships are unreasonable or reasonable? Um, and, and let me know if you guys have living wills in place, if you guys have instructions on what you would like done, if the unfortunate thing happens where you can't make decisions for yourself. Okay. Lastly, y'all know this is the part of the show where y'all write into me and ask me if you're being unreasonable or not. You know, this is called the ask a Z part. So when you chime into this in the comments and you let me know if the person is being reasonable, unreasonable, etc. Hashtag it with ask, ask, <laughs> ask Z so that we know what you're talking about. Okay, let me find it. Let me find, let me find what somebody wrote in. Let me find, there's one that I'm going to do, but I got to do, somebody wrote in such a long scenario. I got to make it a whole show. I just got to make it a whole show. Maybe we'll do that next week or maybe we'll do it when a news cycle is real thin. Um, but here's here's a question because it was so long. I'm like, oh, no, this is going to take an hour all by itself. OK, question. And we're going to call this person. We're going to call this person Emily. OK, no, we're not going to call this person Emily. We're going to call this person Eli. Because guy, we're going to call this person Eli. Eli says, is it reasonable that if you meet somebody once in person, you have a short conversation and you exchange Instagrams? If I don't think, meaning if Eli doesn't think he'll meet up with them in person, he's going to unfollow them on Instagram. So they meet in person real quick. 
they exchange Instagrams, they talk for a little while, but if he don't see no foreseeable meetup in the future, then eventually he's going to unfollow them on Instagram. Now he gives us context. He went to a networking event, he's a guy, and he met a woman there. After a couple of months, he realized that it was unlikely for them to ever meet up platonically. So he's saying, I don't even expect nothing romantic, just platonically, I don't think we ever gonna interact in person again, and so I'm gonna unfollow them. He says, what's the point of following them on social media for years if they will only exist on my phone? So he says, um, is that reasonable? <laughs> or is it bad etiquette? P.S. He always unfollows if he feels like it, but people are saying that he's burning bridges. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, okay. You could follow. That's the thing about social media, right? We, it's ours. Our pages are within the guidelines of Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, X. You know what I'm saying? Within their user guidelines, we got the right to do whatever we want with our page. So we could follow people. We could unfollow people. We could comment. We could not comment. We could respond. We could not respond. Somebody was talking to me and then I sent them a thumbs up, but I didn't. I went back and forth with them a couple of times via DM, right? I sent them a thumbs up at, at, at some point in the conversation and I didn't use a brown thumbs up. I thumbs up. I used a yellow thumbs up and they sent me a response like, oh, I thought I was really talking to Zainab. All right. Well, since it, they just went into this whole assumption, which made me now I can't even respond or talk to you no more because 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 your response lets me know you are wildly unreasonable. Your logic, the way you just spun that out of control too too unreasonable for me. Right. So, okay, so you could follow anybody anytime you want. It could be your mama, it could be your brother, it could be your coworker, it could be a stranger, it could be somebody whose page you came across, you liked a joke, and then they posted a joke you didn't like, and now you want to unfollow. You got the right to do all of that, right? But when you say, um, you know, because what's the point of following them on social media for years if they only exist on your phone? That's the point. The point in following them is that you like their content. So nothing in what you wrote made us feel like or made me feel like you didn't like their content. But your only criteria for following somebody on social media. Remember, the point of social media was to be able to reach and extend to a network that you weren't sitting in front of every day. Right. So it's like, oh, I want to make some friends, but I'm not in Africa. But I know there's people that I that I could be cool with in Africa. And so I'm going to join this social network so that I can connect with people all over the place, although I may not be able to connect with them tangibly in person. But you saying your criteria for following somebody on social media is you got to know that at some point you're going to be able to interface with them in person. And while I do. I'm going to just go ahead and be honest with you. I think that is, that's crazy unreasonable. <laughs> Especially platonically. It's like, what if I'm, what if I'm putting up quality content? You like, you know what? Ooh, that's a good quote. Mm, do unto others as you would do unto you. That's a real good quote. But I ain't never going to see you in person to, to do unto nothing. So let me unfollow you. <laughs> that was a funny joke. But let me unfollow you because I, I ain't never going to see these jokes in real life. Eli, that's unreasonable. That's unreasonable. Unless you're not being honest. Unless you are a guy who met a woman and you exchange, exchange Instagrams because sometimes it's, it's easier to ask somebody for their Instagram than their phone number. Because you know people are more willing to give up their Instagram than their phone number. And then you interacted with her a couple of times on Instagram and realized like, oh, okay, she ain't really... She ain't really checking for you like that. Or maybe you got to put in a lot more work than maybe you wanted to. And you decided, you know what? I'm going to unfollow this person. And listen, if that's the case, that's totally fine. That's totally fine to be interested in somebody and then realize like, all right, they ain't really got that same amount of interest in me. So I'm going to unfollow them. That's, that's completely reasonable. But if you claim that it's just because you ain't going to see the person platonically ever really in life. So why would you, why would you look at them through your phone? The same reason why we watch movies. Most people in their life ain't never going to see Denzel Washington. They never going to be able to shake Denzel Washington's hand, but they still go and watch Equalizer 32. 
<laughs> y'all comment hashtag ask Z and let me know what y'all think was Eli being unreasonable or not. Um, and y'all can, of course, DM me your own questions, send me your scenarios, your questions, and we can decide if your response in this situation is unreasonable or reasonable. Thank you guys so much. This has been another episode of I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson, which is me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week.